And welcome to the Vonnie Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm your host, Shane, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasnia, uh, the self liberator's paradise. Uh, to learn more about the Second Realm Network, uh, this parallel society that is already under construction, uh, just visit Pasnia, P-A-Z-N-I-A uh, dot com. Uh, you should also check out Libertarian Tech Publications, uh, and more specifically, the second edition of my book, uh, which was released on September 11th. Uh, it features a new foreword by Ben Stone, uh, an introduction and update by yours truly, and uh, a number of new chapters touching on the topics of uh, crypto anarchy, uh, Bitcoin, and uh, new per- uh, perpetual traveling possibilities, uh, among other things. Uh, just visit libertyandertech.com forward slash Fonu book. Uh, again, libertyandertech.com forward slash Fonu book uh, to order now. Uh, today, I welcome a new guest to the podcast, uh, someone recommended to me by uh, our friend Matthew Raymer, uh, a previous guest on this podcast uh, who's out in the Philippines. Uh, this, uh, his name is uh, George Papp, uh, founder of the Conscious Renegade podcast and website. Uh, he's a former investment banker who quit, quit his job in 2020 and uh, is now pursuing freedom in uh, the Mediterranean. Uh, looking at some of his guests, I can tell we're on the same wavelength. Uh, specifically, uh, just a couple, I, a couple of note here, Claiming Your Health with Clive DeCarl, uh, someone who I, who I have a lot of respect for myself. Uh, I use uh, his fulvic minerals uh, pretty much daily. Um, importance of financial privacy, strategic, uh, strategic relocation possibilities uh, in Latin America, and uh, more. Uh, he's, uh, he and one of his colleagues also offer one-on-one consultations uh, to educate, uh, engage, and empower you uh, to be the change you want to see in the world. Uh, whether you want to quit your 9-to-5, find financial freedom, or make a positive difference, uh, you can always reach out to chat or just sit back and uh, relax to catch him right now. Uh, so without further ado, George, welcome to the Vani Podcast, man. Uh, how, are you, uh, how are you today? First, thanks of all. Uh, thanks first of all for sort of having me on. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to speak with people with like minds. Uh, I'm good. I'm really good. Um, how are you? Oh, I'm uh, doing quite man, doing uh, quite well, man. I'm glad we're uh, finally able to connect. And uh, you know, anytime someone Matthew points him in my direction, I always make sure to to jump on that. So I, you know, we we had a little pre, I guess a pre call, uh, you know, a couple of few weeks ago, and that was great, uh, getting a little sort of introduction to you. But I'm excited to introduce you to my listeners and and, and go deeper um, on a lot of these subjects. Um, I guess namely just I guess your your transition out of the first realm, which I think is a um, d- definitely an interesting background, and then. Um, I guess, yeah, just diving into those um, other topics like financial independence and per- perpetual traveling and kind of this uh, this new world that we find ourselves in. You know, I've, a lot of people say, I've, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, like, though the freedom is decreasing, you know, tyrannies, tyrannies, you know, tyrannies. In some ways it is, but my perspective is I only see increasing possibilities. So I'm excited to see what your perspective is from out in the Mediterranean. But um, I guess to, to get us started here, um, yeah, you, you are a new voice to a lot of my audience. So uh, I guess, yeah, introduction. Uh, who is George Papp? Yeah, I think first of all, going back to what you mentioned just there, I think we're going into two separate uh, realms. Uh, I think you have more freedom if you believe you can have more freedom. Uh, if you're stuck in the mainstream matrix, then you're going to become even more of a slave than what it was previously. Um, you can see where that's going. So I think it's like two, it depends what you want. It depends what you know as well, knowledge wise, uh, and who you believe you are. Uh, I think that's a major key key difference. But yeah, just introducing myself. Um, yeah, so I've, I've worked for all the criminal organizations previously uh, in London. So HSBC, JP Morgan, Deutsche Bank, um, which other ones? I mean, I've worked for <laughs> about four or five of them, actually. Um, you know, uh, it was always a goal for me to make as much money as possible. That was my initial goal in life, uh, coming from a single mother background. Um, it was to, you know, get an education, let's say in quotation marks, uh, and then go and make some money. The first thing that came to my head was banking because that was where uh, a lot of the money was made in the, definitely the old days anyway. Uh, so that was where I first sort of went down that, that route. And yeah, I mean, when I first left university, uh, not really knowing the extent of the debt that I was in, just like didn't really even come to my head to see, oh yeah, wait, I'm actually in debt now. Um, I, I managed to get a role at HSBC where I was, you know, basically in the front office trading room, uh, at a major investment bank. You think that that's basically like, especially when you leave uni and you're in that mindset of, um, being a young man, um, making money that is definitely more than what you, you could imagine at that age you're kind of thinking, wow, like this is it. I've, I've done really well. Um, and then a year or two passes by the first questions come to my head were this, 
why am I trading one hour, uh, well, two hours a day of my time on a train in the underground, getting to work from like working from seven till six, seven in the night, not having any exposure to sunlight uh, in the winter, especially uh, basically doing something that's really mundane at, at, at times, you know, it is. And that was the questions at that time. So I haven't really fully woken up at this point. At, at that point, I'm questioning, though, this nine to five lifestyle. Mm. And then, you know, my cousins and, and friends would talk to me about, uh, you know, Illuminati and, uh, you know, David Icke videos. And yeah, I actually wasn't closed minded and saying, you know, this couldn't be happening. But at that time, it wasn't affecting my life. I thought it wasn't affecting my life, despite me doing a job that I didn't like uh, trading my time for money. Um, but really, I think it really kicked in in 2019. Obviously, the COVID stuff really forced me to change. And um, obviously, when March came 2020, I basically had in my head that, you know, I, I definitely didn't want to be in this system. I realized the system, what it was, didn't really understand it before, started piecing things together a lot quicker. And then realized, okay, if they asked me for a vaccine uh, or a whatever, we, I don't know if I should even say that word here, but oh, say, uh, say whatever you want, man. To to stay here, <laughs> yeah. I mean, to, if if they're going to ask me for for you know a lethal injection to stay here, uh, I'm definitely resisting. Uh, I don't care. Um, and B, I don't want to work for the system that's enslaving humanity, my family, everyone, basically. So at that point. I'm working from home and then I started learning different skills to be allowed to create other incomes whilst working from home. I was obviously now spending more time in nature because where I lived was sort of out of the city. I was, you know, spending one hour, two hours a day in fields and, and forests and walking the dog. And that kind of opened my mind to what life should be more about. Uh, and it kind of allowed me to change my whole mindset completely. Um, so yeah, uh, at that point, um, I created different skills for myself to, to actually be able to work online and then, yeah, quit my job quite late in the day, actually, November 21. So not even, it's surprising actually that this time last year, I was actually still working, uh, for an investment bank, even though I, I had tapped out a few years ago, I was just basically, uh, just trying to work a way out of the system and uh, now fully, fully remote, um, working for, well, not really working for, I guess I'm contributing to, a, uh, to something that I obviously believe in, uh, as a side gig, but also obviously I have my own business, uh, in Cryptonomous and also the, the podcast, as you said, the conscious renegade, and now really moving towards what can help society instead of basically working for money and selling my soul to destroy humanity. So yeah, that's where I am now. And uh, yeah, looking to keep on that track and I guess help other people is, is now uh, where I want to really show value is to help other people. Nice. Awesome, man. Awesome. And uh, that's funny. One thing that came to mind when you were talking was uh, uh, you mentioned your friends were your, I guess your friends and family were sharing your videos about, you know, like uh, like David Icke and stuff. So you were like one of those cases where, um, you know, such sharing actually worked, which I don't actually hear very many case studies of that where, you know, like, uh, well, I guess I hear some, but it's it's rare, right? You know, it's, and this is like, it's always just frustration. So, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're hearing that, uh, that it is, that it does, it is effective. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's amazing to hear. Um, I guess, uh, uh, was yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was young when they were showing me stuff. Um, but not only that, I think it's, I, I kind of knew things were bullshit. I, I had a feeling like even when I wasn't fully, you know, awake, let's say, but I was, I was kind of realizing things were a bit bullshit, how things were like, why are we paying for our existence? If, if they really cared for our, for our livelihoods, why are we, uh, basically putting ourselves in huma humongous amount of debt to even live in London, which is crazy to me why you would want to do that now. Um, so, yeah, and also my grandfather grew up in uh, communist Hungar Hungary. And, um, you know, this guy is 85 years old. He works uh, on the land still. He has no health issues. He's only now 
uh, got like a, a problem with his knee, but this guy lives organically and he knows what the system is and he knows what communism means. And he's he's not taken the lethal injection and he's fine. Uh, obviously, he's fine because, you know, it's not deadly and there's nothing there. So um, and another thing with him is like the way he lives his life. And uh, he's actually been banned on Facebook like 200 <laughs> times. He keeps getting, uh, you know, for an 85 year old, it's quite interesting. So, you know, yes. maybe I had that sort of thing already there. But, um, yeah, it's interesting how it sort of develops as you grow. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, um, in, in terms of Vanu, uh, if you're talking about, you know, like, uh, you know, going for going for a lot of money and living those expensive lifestyles in like London and why people would do that. And I guess it just the thought comes to me and we talked about this before on the show. But I mean, it is kind of like with with the first realm, life, first realm lifestyle, you pretty much are buying a lifestyle, right? Um, like you have to have that job making that type of money to be able to like afford that afford, you know, um, afford like, being dependent upon all of those things in, in the first realm, you know. Um, so I guess it does. It does make sense, uh, at least to to a certain degree. Um, but uh, um, but yeah, as I guess what, what was your first rec- your first recognition was that basically was sucking all your time away, um, and that was that's what I always realized first before like and that that was my first yeah my first recognition was that I was just you know like I, all my time was disappearing and I wasn't really building anything for myself, and uh, that was unacceptable. So um, sounds like you came to a similar realization. It was kind of the first realization maybe. Yeah, I think it's the time that you could be doing something else. Um, and you know, it's like on the weekends you would be completely wrecked as well. So even your time off is like, like what, what am I doing? Like, I'm just on a treadmill earning money to pay bills and a mortgage and all this crap. And it was a choice. And, uh, I realized that that's not the choice. I I realized that actually I'd rather be free and live on a tent on a beach than um, work somewhere I hated for most of my time of my life, uh, living in a decent place in London, um, you know, where basically you've got to pay to go on holiday uh, at least four times a year unless you're, uh, otherwise you're unhappy, to be honest, because the weather's poor and no one's really living a free sort of life there. No one can really afford to to pay a mortgage over there now. I mean, now it's, it's ridiculous. So I'm happy that I moved out of there. Um, you know, not not as in the EU's any better, but over here people can be self sustainable. You know, I, a lot of people grow their own fruit and veg already. You know, this part of the culture. So yeah, like we're going back to your point of the sort of nine to five lifestyle. The first thing I would say is you have to learn a skill that allows you to at least contribute to a remote working role if you wanted to work remotely. Um, and that's if you, you know, that's the transition. I think if you wanted to still earn an income outside the nine till five, that's at least learning a skill whilst, um, you know, working for, let's say someone online and then creating something of your own, uh, that allows the smooth transition in my opinion. Um, and then my, my goal is to sort of build a homestead also. And that's where, where we are now, basically. Awesome. Yeah. So I get, let's dig in, uh, dig in more to that. Uh, so mention, you know, um, relocation and traveling. Um, I want to hear more about, uh, uh, I guess, yeah, you mentioned, I mean, you mentioned you live on an island somewhere, I think, yeah, in, I think in the Mediterranean. So I guess tell us a little bit about, um, you know, like, uh, about like where you are, uh, life there, the political economic climate, um, advantages, disadvantages, disadvantages that you see from like a freedom perspective. Uh, and I'll go as deep into that as, as you like. So I'm on an island called Cyprus, and if no one's aware of where that is, um, it's in the Mediterranean, close to Greece and Turkey. A third of the island is uh, taken, well, it was it's occupied by the Turkish uh, Republic, and then you've got two thirds, which is Cypriot, which is sort of Greek ethnicity, basically. I'm not into politics, so, you know, I don't really have too much of an opinion on all of that. But what I would say is that being in the EU has been a detriment to this country. That's number one. We all know what the EU is. Uh, it's basically to destroy all the countries that are within it economically. Um, so, and to bring them in into the mainframe. So the Cyprus pound was actually stronger than the British pound before 2004 when it adopted the euro. Um, and once it obviously adopted the euro, it's uh, you know, gone along with everyone else. I would say 
unfortunately, the people here and in Southern Europe, people have been indoctrinated to believe the medical system more, I believe, than even the UK. So actually moving from the UK to Cyprus, I've seen a lot of differences in masks, wearing of masks, the amount of people still believing in the pharmaceutical industry, which is interesting because actually these guys over here, when they first put speed cameras up on roads, they actually just set them alight. Uh, so they still don't even have speed cameras here because of that. Uh, but something's changed since I came here when I was young. I used to come on holiday. I think it's the EU indoctrination and obviously more stuff on, on TV and people listen to all of that. And I think things have changed in that way. So if you're in the system here, it, they are very, very much brainwashed. And I would say more brainwashed than, um, than a lot of the sort of UK uh, citizens, actually. Uh, it's interesting. But, I, but having spoken to my sort of, uh, I have a barber now who's actually called Rebel Barbers. And he actually is a rebel, so he actually does not... He knows about the World Economic Forum, we're fully chatting about it. And actually, it seems like the demographic of people who are um, actually for the vaccines are older demographic. Uh, it seems like actually here, a lot of people within the 20-year-old to late 30s, a lot haven't actually taken the vax. Um, they're kind of against all of the mandates and everything. But the rest of the population are very much uh, for it. Um, so it's, it's an interesting demographic here. But I would say this. Yes, there is issues. They did the whole safe pass. So we couldn't even go into super, major supermarkets when we first moved here. Uh, they were very strict, unlike London and the UK, which kept it open. But I realized it was more than just all of that. I realized it was more than that because for me, and our situation, I didn't want to be part of the system anyway, eventually. And in the UK, being able to live uh, off grid or away from the system is so difficult because the, well, the queen used to own everything in terms of land. So even if you, you know, purchase the land, I mean, they can basically kick you out. And I guess that is everywhere in the world, but over there is very much a control system very much full in place technology is full full advanced compared to here over here there's so much cash transaction they uh, also have a good climate so the reason for moving here was actually we could live uh, a more self-sustainable lifestyle than in the uk at any point we have contacts we have family we have a system here already that we can integrate with and um i think it's more of that the climate so, you know, let's say in the winter in the UK or Germany this year, people are going to be struggling to heat their homes. Over here, this, the lowest temperature will probably be like 14, 15 centigrade. So those issues are not there. They don't rely on the Russian uh, gas and oil here, which is another good point. Uh, so they won't have these issues. Now, they will have other issues. They'll have many issues, um, you know, potentially also Turkey and Greece, have uh, could potentially spark war, but it's not about all of that. It's more about it's easier to live a self-sustainable lifestyle here. Um, and we have contacts and it's uh, that was more important to me than, you know, living in the UK where, you know, suddenly they dropped every mask mandate. They dropped all of the, the they didn't even have a safe pass where you had to have a, like a test or a, a jab to go into shop main shops. Um, but over here, uh, they've kind of started, they've obviously dropped all of that now, but it was more than that. It was to be self-sustainable. And anyway, to have safe passes to go into main supermarkets, why are you shopping there anyway? Just go local. And it, a lot of this stuff actually is forcing you to do the right things. Right. Yeah. It's, it's amazing how the para the, it's amazing how the paradox works. Like people are scared about what's happening but really it's kind of forcing you to do the, the right things for your life um and actually for the world really um but you just got to look through the um the evil stuff you've got to look through all of that and see the positives that if you choose to it will increase your freedom if you work at it so yeah that's the reason why we're here it's not our, it could be it may not be our final uh, place uh, where we could move around but for right now i'm definitely happier than than being in london yeah 
Yeah, well, that's uh, that's all that's uh, all good information. I guess what what came to mind for me. So with Vanu, um, we talk a lot about liberated lifestyles. So like uh, van nomadism, uh, living on a sailboat is is one thing. Um, there's uh, uh, yeah, I guess uh, off grid homesteading, uh, which we we kind of brought up a couple times here. So I'm curious, just like because uh, I don't know anything about Cyprus, there might be some videos listening that hey, maybe they maybe they're interested in relocating to Cyprus. Um, but uh, I guess what um, and you and you might not have personal experience with these things, but just out of curiosity, from what you know about about Cyprus, like you think it'd be friendly to van nomads, um, like uh, off grid homesteading, might that be a possibility for residents like you um, or for foreigners even if they didn't have if, if if could a foreigner acquire you know buy land in Cyprus? Is it super hard? Um, and then I guess living on a sailboat, so how tyrannical are the ports? Um, and I guess, and we, we can cover those one at a time. I'll just kind of laying out to, to give you an idea of kind of the, the direction here. Um, having been here for a year nearly, I would say actually it's not the right place for someone who doesn't have something here already or family or, a, or a sort of network here already. And I'll say this for many reasons. Number one, um, land and housing or any of that stuff is more expensive than other places in Europe. If I was going to, if someone basically had no network, they didn't know anyone, but wanted to move to Europe, I would say the two best places that have a great climate would be Portugal or Greece, just due to climate and, um, and cost of actual land and stuff like that is cheaper. Over here is actually a lot more expensive. And another problem actually in Cyprus is water um you know they they have a lot of drought periods during the year so from may all the way till september you probably won't see any rain now this is a big problem um unless you have land that has a water well already but um if you're looking for land and you find water on the land you have a you now need to have a license which they just put in place in october you have to have a license to drill on your own land so Jesus. i wouldn't even recommend cyprus I'm being yeah. completely, yeah, I'm, I'm being completely honest here. I wouldn't yeah. even recommend it um, for someone who doesn't have a network already. Like, luckily for us, like, uh, my wife's grandparents have land uh, with water already on it. Uh, my grandfather has land with water already on it. They've got active uh, fruit trees already growing. They have an abundance of, of fruit and veg. And um, they have chickens and all that stuff. So we already have, like, something here. Right. Uh, and I think this was a major uh, sort of key player in in our move um for others i don't think it's a, it's the right spot because i know that digital nomad visas if you wanted to get a visa i don't i think they've just brought one out but i'm not too sure what it what it's like i haven't even looking looked into it because i've become a citizen uh, i've got my second passport but i think for greece and portugal there's much more favorite favoritism in in that sense uh, so yeah, I wouldn't recommend it actually for someone who's not either a native or um, or have a network here because um, also the locals aren't as I don't find them as friendly actually compared to even Greece. <laughs> uh, for some reason, that's that, that's the case in my opinion, uh, unless you speak the language. Uh, so, yeah, I, that's my completely honest opinion. That's why I'm not even saying this is my you know this is where I'm going to stay forever or anything. Um, you know. Um, and also another problem is is the war type stuff. Actually, uh, Turkey is uh, not far away, and you know there has been a history here of that. So you know there there is many issues. I would say. Um, so yeah, there are better countries, but for us, we have we have a network, we have we have land. So for now, to get through this winter, at the very least, is is a good place, uh, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. And that is, that is definitely valuable information. I'm, I can't remember. I'm trying to, I'm trying to recall back to, it was like four years ago, I interviewed somebody from like the Netherlands or somewhere up there. And his answer is basically the same with the homesteading is no, you pretty much have to be a, you have to be a resident and it's not easy to get land even if you are. So um, it kind of seems like it might be that way. Um, it's, it's, it's a little different culture than it is here. In the way, even though in the West, there's no such thing as private property and land ownership with the, with the fee simple system. But regardless, you can still like have that semblance of private property um, quite a bit easier, at least until they just, you know, bump, I guess, uh, inflate all the price over the past two years. But um, uh, anyway, yeah, that, that's all. That's mm -hmm. all. Yeah, that's all really, uh, really good information. So, uh, yeah, Greece and Portugal would be, I guess, a couple couple places you'd you'd, um, you'd look at in, in the EU. Um, I guess, um, uh, I, yeah. I guess just yeah. An, there's another another question that comes to, uh, that comes to mind from from that, that, that European perspective is um, for for um, 
people living on a sailboat, how difficult it is, I guess, if you have any knowledge on this whatsoever, like for Cyprus, how difficult would it be to like, uh, you know, enter port um, there? I'm guessing if they had those passes for the grocery stores, they probably weren't letting anyone in anyways um, over the past couple of years. But yeah, I'm curious. I have zero knowledge, but I would say there are small ports in Cyprus that, you know, we've gone to like very remote places where there's literally just a very small port and there's no one guarding that. Like there's no one there. Uh, so I believe there, there could be an, uh, an option of that. Uh, there are major ports, obviously they'll be, you know, pretty diligent and stuff like that. But I would say that there, they may be a case. I mean, don't go by this information, <laughs> but there's, there are several small, there are several small ports where I've thought, you know what, like you could just basically hop in and hop off here. I mean, like just take a boat um, if I had one, which I'm planning to get um, at some point um, and just sail off and come back. I, and I don't see why there would be any issues uh, because there's no one guarding anything. Uh, it's just basically a very small fishing ports and stuff like that. So I, I believe that, I mean, it's something to look into for sure. Yeah. And, and yeah. And as you're saying, that's um, all the only real reference I have. I used to follow this uh, this uh, blogging couple that you know lived on a sailboat and they were hyper compliant status so obviously when they went to port they checked in with all the proper government agencies and I was like Jesus so if you do this legally that's what you have to do um, at least for the country they were entering so I'm always curious um, but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm always sure there's ways to just yeah like especially these small countries um, yeah I doubt they have strong you know so called immigration control or whatever but uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's that's good to know they they can't control they can't control immigration over here to be honest like they've had an influx of um, immigration from Africa and from the uh, from like right. India and that stuff and that's an EU policy right they're just basically flooding Greece Italy Cyprus with uh, immigrants which is obviously not their fault uh, we all know that uh, but Basically, it's just to destroy the European economy. Um, so they don't know how to control that. They, they like, don't get me wrong. Like over here, it's very, it's nowhere near as controlled as London. Like you feel freer. Like you go a lot. You, you people know that some police. I mean, it used to be a lot better. Uh, but you know, everyone knows someone who's in a in a high status or somewhere that someone that's in somewhere. Uh, so being a small island in that sense, there is always maybe a way out for someone who has contacts right okay interesting so um i suppose uh and yeah as i i think i kind of introduced kind of led with led with this but um, I mentioned I've mentioned this book a couple times in this podcast, but there's a really popular book in Bitcoin circles called The Sovereign Individual, uh, published in the 90s. Um, the author, uh, there, and the authors talk about some harrowing things that the world population could face, uh, but also the abundance of opportunities made possible by nomadism, uh, digital technology, things like Bitcoin, encrypted, uh, encrypted communications, and uh, remote work, uh, country shopping, as Rhea would call it. Um, so, yeah, I guess what's your take on on the on the current environment for freedom pioneers? Uh, and I guess uh, um, beyond what we've talked about so far, what are some I guess some other strategies and tools that you see as critically important um, going forward? I think you people need to gain skills that will be relevant for online work. But even further than that, I think the more important things are the basics. Uh, really, are the basics like not relying on the government slash corporations to provide you food to work outside of the fiat currency system to to learn skills in regards to you know how to to provide food for your family i think these are the very key skills uh, and i think also being in the right geographical location for yourself to navigate that would be the best option so beyond that i think cryptocurrencies do help i would say Bitcoin as a solution for me, it isn't, but it is some. It is a gatekeeper to at least opening people up to, um, in my opinion, privacy coins being more of a solution in the interim. Now, I, I believe Bitcoin solves one issue, and it solves the inflation issue. Mm -hmm. So it, obviously, central banks can't print it out into hyperinflation, but I don't think, unfortunately, it could be the final solution as Bill Gates says, let's say, um, for us freedom goers, because they can block uh, Bitcoin addresses, right? There's no privacy. You can get blacklisted, blah, blah, blah. 
And I think this is where Monero and Pirate Chain and some of the others come into play as potential um, use cases um, in regards to privacy and in freedom, because they won't even know that you have a certain amount of, of, um, of currency, let's say. So I would say, I would say learn privacy. I would say learn privacy coins and how they work. And I would also learn skills. And uh, the main skills, in my opinion, are a finding, uh, you know, look online for potential uh, remote work and learn a skill that you, you can see an abundance of roles, find a skill that you can learn, get one of those roles just to tie you over if you don't have uh, a major sort of financial backing already. And then start basically building your own business while you do that. Um, and I think this is basically the, the way to go. And then basically try and be as self-sufficient as possible. This is the the end, I think, is is to be self-sufficient. And that's in every way, food, water, um, food and water, really, uh, is a health, everything, everything. Uh, education, don't send your kids to the state schools. I mean, we all kind of know that stuff. But implementing it is is easier said than done. So you better. I think it's sort of to get started on those things is the main is the main thing, and it's a process that takes a while. Like for me, I'm I'm still in the banking system slightly, uh, um, but working a way out of the banking system slowly. And it's happened recently where it's completely very close to being completely self sufficient on the economic side of things. Um, but yeah, now moving on to food myself and water. So just being prepared for the worst, but expecting uh, expecting better because things don't have to go a certain way, but you should be at least prepared for the worst. Right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I guess the self-sufficiency is great, but uh, in terms of at least here in, here in the USSA, um, yeah, you don't want to be eating the shit that they sell at the grocery store. So producing your own food, if you want to have any good health at all or any nutritious food, is kind of something that you have to do. Um, now, I guess I'm curious just from your perspective, because I see it all, I, I, I've been seeing it more and more on Twitter, which is not surprising, but people will, will say, oh, I, you know, I went over and traveled in Europe and ate the same way that I did here. And, you know, I ate and drank like shit and I lost like 15 pounds and I feel great. Um, is, I guess I, so I'm definitely of the opinion that uh, um, the, the, those of, uh, you know, those folks, uh, you know, here in the USA are getting, are, they aren't getting as slow poisoned as some of the other countries. It's it's definitely just over, and it's 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 not it's it's very bad. So I guess your perspective, um, I'm not sure if you've spent much time in the U.S., but uh, um, just food quality more more generally over there in health. I'm curious. Yeah, I would say food quality and health is massively mm -hmm. an upgrade to London, which I would consider closer to the U.S., which I haven't spent any time in. Um, yeah, so I can see a massive difference in, in food quality because when you go to London supermarkets, it's all just, everything looks too perfect. Everything looks so perfect, which you know it's not. And everything's shipped over from Chile, from all kinds of different places, South America, Africa. They're just shipped over from everywhere because they can barely grow anything over there that's past, uh, let's say, lettuce and some tomatoes and cucumbers. So, you know, everything is shipped over. And you can see the quality is poor, the taste is poor, and over here you can see a massive difference. So the local supermarket here, which is a family-run small grocery store, uh, we go to every day. They didn't need a safe pass or anything. They didn't really care. Um, they produce everything's from the local village, pretty much. Everything's very local. And it says, when I look at like the fruit and veg section, Everything's pretty much from Cyprus. There might be some things from Greece um, or Italy, but that's as far as it goes. There's basically, if you want mangoes, okay, there is even a Cyprus mango, but they'll maybe import that from South America or Central America. But most things are from Cyprus itself. And that is a massive difference. And you can see the quality because nothing looks too perfect. Everything looks like it's been grown in a backyard or in a field. Um, and I think the EU health and food stuff is a lot better than the US. Um, economically, they're completely ruined, as you've heard in the last <laughs> decade of Greece and Cyprus. I mean, I don't know if you knew, know what happened in Cyprus, where they actually tested the bail-in situation. Uh, so that's this country, yeah. So um, where they actually took money out of the, the people's accounts to basically bail out the, um, the banking system. Um, 
which is shocking that they still don't have a Bitcoin ATM here uh, since that. Uh, no one even really cares about crypto here, which is hilarious because they're still queuing up for the banks and they're still using banks. Um, but yeah, going back to food and health, that side of things, I can't fault that. Um, like what's amazing about this village that we're staying in is, I mean, the people are so are friendly and they know us uh, now. You know, they'll just drive past and just hand us some pomegranates because it's from their land and they've just like picked some and uh, they're just like fresh as hell. Um, and it's a beautiful thing. So, yeah, on that side of things, I can't fault it. And, you know, people here are in general a lot healthier and they live longer. Um, it's just what I would say is the medical system, I mean, completely insane over here. So don't get involved in the medical system is what I say over here because they're... Um, they're prescribing like tablets and pills for everything. Like I literally had, uh, I pulled a tendon on my foot. I went to just see, you know, if it's broken or not, to so just get a, uh, an x-ray. And um, they were, they were prescribing pills straight away, like to like soothe the pain or like just to maybe do something. I'm like, they wouldn't even do this in, in the shit <laughs> NHS system because they, you know, they're just fully, uh, they're fully on pharmaceuticals over here. They prescribe straight away to medicine. Uh, so they're fully involved in that. And I think that's where they might get the people actually. So they've been so fast forward on the pharmaceuticals to, um, to basically, uh, like balance out the fact that they're living a very healthy lifestyle. Yeah, it, exactly. The, dynamic. But yeah, yeah that's, in terms that's of food. Yeah. The benefits, oh, oh. For, the benefits from the food nutrition are being outweighed by the negatives of the pharmaceuticals, essentially kind of. <laughs> yeah 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 definitely but lifestyle lifestyle wise look if i basically was like do you know what if they put us uh if i if in the future they said you can't you need to have a vaccine to leave or to to live or to move anywhere i was like look i'd rather be in a country that lives more organically you have a beautiful sea every day you have mountains you have just a beautiful lifestyle climate i'd rather be there you know, if the shit hits the fan, I'd rather be there than just be stuck in London and like praying to somehow be allowed to leave to go on holiday. And that's what um, that was our that was our choice. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So I guess uh, just uh, I, we've talked. Yeah, you mentioned a little bit about it. You guys are, are moving toward you're moving towards, you know, homesteading in your own food, your, in your own food. But what's uh, you know, what's on the on the path or the horizon for you? Um, yeah. Tell us tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so uh, we're rebranding, I guess, not to plug, but this is what I'm doing. I mean, I'm, we're rebranding yeah, yeah. Cryptonomous and the Conscious Renegade to Renegade Lifestyle. Yeah, so we're, we're rebranding to the Renegade Lifestyle just to encompass both because I was fully focused on crypto uh, and privacy and stuff. But I don't think that really explains the full picture of how I wanted to help people because there's one thing exiting the banking system, but if you're mentally mental health or you're still, you know, working in the matrix or you're still, you know, unhealthy or you're, you have your kids in an education in, in the state education, I wanted to take a more holistic view and helping people in that way. Um, instead of just focusing on the banking and the great reset on that side of things, it was more of a full self self sustainability, uh, sort of lifestyle. And that's what we're going to do now, uh, on the renegade lifestyle. So that's, that's going to be released soon. Um, so that's what I'm working on uh, with my with my team. Also, yeah, moving into the, the homestead, hopefully in the next uh, few months, just basically being as self-sufficient as possible, purchasing some land, um, building an off-grid home, using solar panels, growing food, having a well, um, and yeah, just having that option, basically. Having that option is, is the main thing. I mean, as we're going along, you know, I'm helping my grandfather on his land. Uh, so learning a lot from him because he, he grows organically, he has done for many years. So I'm um, currently helping him um, and what he's doing. So we have a backup plan. Um, so yeah, I guess the plan really is just to, to build the renegade lifestyle, help as many people as possible. Um, basically live a life of freedom and be ungovernable. And then for on, on my lifestyle front, improve my health every day, which is changing my food lifestyle, which I have done immensely since moving here, um, eating a lot more fresh food, eating a lot more salad, 
a lot more fruit and uh being able to grow that and that's that's what i'm doing trying to learn and uh yeah eventually be fully self-sustainable yeah yeah just like a... you man so it's uh it's, it's great to hear that's great to hear and and, and you mentioned you're, you're you might be you you're, you're kind of interested in getting a sailboat yourself too you have any any uh inclination i know for for me that's one of my dreams to travel around on a sailboat you want to do some sailing someday sounds like for sure for sure it's always been a, a small dream of mine to have i don't know why I, since i was a kid um you know i was always like my uncle had a boat in uh, the south of england and i used to go on there and i used to really enjoy it and um i don't know there's a there's definitely a, a sort of thing in greece and sort of the greek islands that you know everyone loves a boat like they they live on like people live for boats like they're fishing there's so many islands where people just hop on hop off so it's kind of been i guess in me to to want to have a boat for some reason but yeah i i love that freedom that it gives you even when you're on the boat just sailing through the sea it it, it gives that uh, that sense of freedom um and yeah being able to travel uh, using that it gives you a lot of options and and also just a lot of that that sort of beautiful freedom that you feel when you're on a boat so yeah i'm um, i'm definitely looking into it it's not on the plans right in, right now but definitely in the next year or or two i'll i'll definitely be looking into that a lot more right <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, uh, but I'm 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 guessing though, especially at Greece and, and Cyprus, it's probably a little more easy, a little easier barrier to entry than like where I am in the middle of, you know, a landlocked area. But uh, yeah, I've got I mean, I've got some ideas for for resolving that. I've I've thought about it a little bit. Uh, um, got some ideas from from old Vani publications um, on on how to go about it. But yeah, that's that's definitely down the road. Um, definitely down the road. Um, I suppose um, I don't really have. Uh, any other questions for you today? I guess uh, uh, we've we've covered a lot a lot of great stuff, um, a lot of great stuff in the realm of liberation. I think what your specialty is, and what you can really offer people, um, is helping them to transition from that first you know that first realm to that second realm lifestyle. That uh, you know nine to five to um, to that free life. Since you've made the transition, it's it's kind of the recommendation I've always made to made to folks is. Um, like it's, it's, you know, one step at a time. Uh, we aren't you know, like the, the goal, the, like the, the objective is freedom, not to like, you know, leave yourself destitute or anything like that. Um, so yeah, you know, make, make step, you know, step at a time and, and, uh, you know, you'll, you'll find your way out if it's, if it's what you want to do. So, um, and yeah, George is here to, to help you through that, uh, leaving, leaving the investment banking world. So, um, yeah, with that, man, uh, um, I guess, uh, any closing thoughts, anything else you'd like to leave the listeners with? Yeah, I guess don't get caught up in the fear uh if you do and uh the sort of anger and stuff i think we all get through that sort of um i mean i was an angry person at the beginning of covid mm -hmm. uh like why are people so stupid um, you know what are they doing blah blah blah. the government's this the government's that let's go protest which we all know is just bullshit because you're asking your masters to, to sort of change things so um yeah so that is um that is the first thing is kind of being able to to basically get rid of the fear and the anger and being present and then you can really make your moves because you're more clear clairvoyant and you can actually build something um and the fear actually makes you make wrong decisions most of the time so I would say forget about don't focus on what the news or even the alternative space tells you because in the alternative space we see a lot of fear being pushed out also yeah you know, all the time like you can say that the news is is pushing fear out which it obviously does but even watching um odyssey certain channels all day with no solutions just watching <laughs> like what the government's doing which are awful is another form of watching the news right so I would never plug yourself in too much into that. Yeah, I guess keep yourself updated a bit with it, but not like watching videos and getting angry all the time. I would say focus on yourself, focus on your family, focus on building your own system and your own kind of, your own freedom. Because that's what you should be focusing on is kind of building your own, your own lifestyle because um, no one else will do that for you. So yeah, I think that's the main focus, man, is uh, sort of leveling up whether that's mentally, physically, um, and yeah, just, just moving on to that sort of things, which we help on, on, on the renegade lifestyle. We, we help people who are, you know, whether they have zero right now, or they already have a lot of, let's say funds or whether they're into crypto, whether they're, you know, a health specialist, we're helping people basically move into a, a space where they're able to make decisions 
and give themselves more freedom from a space where, you know, let's say someone's still stuck in a nine to five and not knowing a way out, we'll help people with that because we've got people on our team that do that and have already done that. So we have that knowledge and we can help people then uh, move on to the next level and then obviously go on from there. There's so much. But I think the first step is learning a skill and moving out of the nine to five. And then after that, your location independent and then you can make decisions from there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you have that, yeah, that look, that financial independence and location independence, um, then yeah, it's like the sky's kind of the limit. You've, you've got a, a wealth, you know, a breadth of uh, lifestyle changes, uh, or lifestyle choices ahead of you and uh, uh, lots of countries. And, uh, you know, as per the country shopping aspect, um, or I guess the country shopping strategy, uh, you know, there, there will be, uh, you know, there will be some, I guess uh, you could look at as, as Israel called you know, market competition between states. Um, you know, some are going to offer more freedom for the, you know, for the, for their own, you know, selfish interests, but it doesn't mean we can't take advantage of them. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, you have to be flexible. Yep, yeah, for sure. For sure. And having multiple passports, I think is a good idea, even though the, the, obviously the ideal goal would be to have no, uh, you know, government, um, identification, but yeah. got to do what we got to do, unfortunately in this, for sure. in this world. But, um, George, yeah. it's been, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. I look forward to, um, you know, further collaborations in the future. I'll be on your show, um, here, here upcoming. So, um, that'll be a good time. We'll connect again. Um, but, uh, yeah, anything else before I let you go? No, I think that's it. I think, um, yeah, just make sure you you focus on yourself. I think that's the main thing. Focus on yourself and help others who want to be helped. Not forcing your opinion on others is the main thing. And um, yeah, just be that person that people look up to to say, wow, look, he's living a different life. Maybe I should ask him how he's done it. And then that's the way people actually change. Not, you know, this is what the government's doing to you, blah, blah, blah. You should do this. You should... They will never listen. And mm -hmm. uh, why should they? I think it's actually when you change, they will see that you've changed for the better. And then they'll be like, how has he done that? Or what was he doing? Let's, let's talk to him. And then you can influence others in that way and, you know, just help people. And I think mm -hmm. that's what I found being the best, uh, the best way to change the world is like that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's uh, that's definitely sound advice. If you're, you're, fo if you're focusing on what, th what you're doing, what they're doing, then you're not focused on what you're doing. So um, yeah, certainly, certainly sound advice. Well, George, it was great, uh, great chatting, man. Uh, look forward to next time. Um, but as for this, for the, for the rest of you guys, uh, um, thanks for tuning in. Definitely go check out, um, put all the links to, uh, to his stuff in the, in the show notes, go check out uh, his work and, you know, uh, set up a consultation if uh, you're looking for, uh, for assistance. Uh, I guess as for, uh, the Vani podcast, anything Vani, vanipodcast.com is the place to go for that. Uh, libertarianattack.com for LUA publications, uh, solutions oriented publishing, uh, and privacy tools. We do have ghost pads and, uh, ghost phones available um, we will help we uh, we help you share your story but we also help you find your freedom with actual privacy tools and such so um, or as apothecary is there too if you want uh, you know any salves or tinctures or anything of the sort um, and uh, yeah the free republic of Pasnia if you're looking to join the second realm uh, network that's under construction so um, yeah with that guys always remember Vaughn was yours for the making and the second realm is yours for the building uh, until next time see ya the path of a self liberator Introduction from Vanu, A Strategy for Self-Liberation, 2nd Edition by Shane Radliff, coming September 11th. Back in 2018, when I first published the book you're about to read, I could have never imagined the journey I was about to embark upon. At that time, I had just decided to quit my newly acquired electrician apprenticeship job that I really enjoyed, largely on a whim, and uh, moved to Austin, Texas to live with my former Vanu podcast co-host, Kyle Reardon. So, in the span of a few weeks, the entire trajectory of my life changed. It wasn't planned or even really consciously driven. Uh, it's almost as if my true will was finally going to start making its appearance, uh, whether me or anyone else liked it or not. After a couple of months staying with Kyle in a third-story apartment in uh, North Austin, my situation changed again, and uh, even more radically. He informed me that he and his freemates uh, had found a house and were going to move out ahead of the lease expiring, meaning I would have to take over the exorbitantly priced rent plus utilities on my own uh, if I were to stay there. Needless to say, I sought out other options, uh, rooms to rent on Craigslist, shared housing, cheap options that I could actually afford uh, in the high-priced servile society lifestyle that is Austin. I shared my situation with some friends on social media, and a buddy of mine, Jason Henza, put forth an interesting proposition. At the end of the month, he'd be driving through Austin on his way to Acapulco, Mexico, and that I could ride down and stay with him. He was also generous enough to cover some costs for me since I was in a tumultuous situation financially. Of course, my first thought was, hell no, uh, there's no way that's going to happen. 
But then again, I really didn't have any other options. Uh, and this is exactly the type of adventure I wanted, uh, exactly the type of, of adventure that I needed. I made the minimal preparations that I could and scrounged up as much fiat currency as was available in the meantime. Thankfully, Austin being the mega city it is, uh, it was pretty easy to find a few temporary jobs in the weekends, uh, major events like the uh, Formula, One, Formula One race, uh, business conferences, uh, etc. In addition to a uh, cheap tent camping spot in Liberty Hill for a few weeks uh, before heading really far south. Leaving some personal non vanu experiences aside, uh, we arrived safely in Acapulco and I got to enjoy a couple months uh, with a somewhat large anarchist community uh, in what truly was a tropical paradise. In terms of bludgies and other state agents, it is undoubtedly better for a Vanuan self-liberator. You're usually just one really cheap bribe away from your freedom, and if you're a gringo, uh, they're even more likely to leave you alone. Uh, it's even a lot easier to acquire legal, authentic Mexican identification too, uh, whether it's a driver's license, registration, etc., uh, enabling prospects for a simplified second identity. But in terms of private coercion, it really is a dangerous place. Though, worth noting, this private violence is still essentially, essentially state-caused, uh, a result of the war on drugs. Don't forget about the USSA government literally shipping weapons south of the border, too. My time in Acapulco ended in December 2018, uh, but I'd planned on returning for the Acapulco conference uh, that February. About a week after the conference was set to begin, John Galton was killed, and uh, Henza was shot uh, multiple times at John and Lily's house high up on the mountain, a place I spent a lot of time at, and uh, likely would have been at, if I was still in Mexico with Henza. I'm extremely thankful Henza and Lily are still here with us to share their powerful stories, and uh, may John rest in peace. Uh, he was truly a dedicated freedom pioneer. After John's death, I settled back in on what, what is uh, now my homestead in southern Illinois. Uh, working at the family distillery, podcasting, and uh, largely just spending time decompressing alone in the wilderness. Uh, this is what I consider the official start uh, to my liberated lifestyle, a lifestyle wherein my time is my own and I'm free to follow my passions. I made some critical lifestyle changes such as quitting alcohol and adopting a new, much healthier way of eating and uh, gained a whole new take on life. Uh, the brain fog was entirely gone, I felt amazing, and I discovered my newfound front-running passion, uh, learning about health, the miraculous human body and investigating health modalities to assist individuals in restoring balance in their bodies, uh, that is, uh, reversing so-called disease. But of course, as per the connected nature of this realm, this rabbit hole of health led to the topics of breakthrough free energy, uh, the Pazzi Department of Health and Wellness, uh, which now has an authentic Rife machine, uh, one of George Wiseman's aqua care machines, and uh, other amazing supplements and tools. And in September 2020, uh, the Free Republic of Pazzi was created, a decentralized network of second realms, our own parallel society. My wonderful free wife and I are nearing food cell sufficiency. Our flock currently including a dozen, lamb, dozen or so lambs, a few goats, uh, 30 or 40 birds, chickens, ducks, and turkeys, a uh, half dozen rabbits, a few flourishing gardens, and uh, yearly gatherings of liberation uh, for vetted, traveling, uh, van nomads, and venuans. It's been a hell of a handful of years, but I've accomplished the major objective I set out to achieve uh, when I first started digging into solutions way back in 2015. That is, uh, get out of the 9 to 5 rat race jobs that were literally killing me. Of course, I've got much bigger dreams. Uh, living on a sailboat, the eventual acquisition of a decommissioned aircraft carrier for second round purposes, a uh, complete spagyrics, alchemy laboratory, etc. But I'm eternally grateful to be where I am and for all those who have played a part. With the recent release of the audiobook, I've decided to release the second edition uh, with the entirety of the main content remaining the same. I've added this introduction and an additional chapter at the end with more information, since my experiences are so much greater now. Doing it in this manner means that the audiobook can remain as is, and this uh, additional material tacked on later. Big thanks to Phoenix Aurora and Matthew Workman for their efforts on this. I'll leave it there for now, and let the 2018 version of myself walk you through the most liberating freedom strategy I've ever come across. I wish you the best in your pursuit of freedom, and please do reach out if there's any way I can be of service. Always remember, Bonnie was yours for the making, and the second realm is yours for the building. Cheers from the Free Republic. Shane, Rayo 2. August 2022, The Bonnie Podcast. The second edition of Shane Radliff's Bonnie, A Strategy for Self Liberation, releases via Liberty under Attack Publications September 11. Get the updated, updated book on Banu, and begin, or continue, your journey of liberation today. Pre-order now, libertyunderattack.com forward slash VONU book 2. Again libertyunderattack.com forward slash VONU book 2. And always remember, Vanu is yours for the making. Cheers from the Free Republic of Pasnia.